It seems like this crab is about to break in half. No, wait, that's exactly what's happening. It discards the bottom part of itself along with the claws and legs. Slowly and somewhat slippery, the crab emerges, revealing its new limbs that seem almost see-through and totally alien-like. And if you think it's like a glimpse into a tiny, eerie underworld, well, you're right. But without this molting, the crab won't survive. Crabs absolutely have to molt, and there's a good evolutionary reason behind it. You see, unlike humans and many other animals, crabs don't have skin or an internal skeleton. Looks like nature kind of forgot about that. Instead, they've got an exoskeleton, a kind of outer skeleton covering their bodies. A crab's tough outer shell works like a knight's armor, keeping it safe from predators. The shell also gives the crab its shape. Without it, the crab would be shapeless, like a puddle. Uh, uh, uh. In a nutshell, the exoskeleton is a big help to the crab as it shields its vital organs and also makes it stronger. Yet it also acts as a limitation to the crab's growth. The exoskeleton of a crab is tough and rigid. It doesn't have the ability to change shape. On the inside, however, the crabs are soft and continuously get larger. Eventually, they need to molt, shedding their old shells to make room for a new one. I'd say it's a bit like swapping out shoes that don't fit anymore, but unfortunately, it's not that simple. It's freaking hard. The process is divided into four stages. It's stressful and very dangerous. During the molt, which lasts a few hours, the crab is at its most vulnerable and uses up a ton of energy. So before the molting begins, the crab needs to prepare itself. Well, not like that. Or rather, not like that at all. Just like bears bulk up before hibernation, crabs start eating more. They focus on getting more calcium to grow a new outer shell. Without this key component, everything would just fall apart. Crustaceans, depending on the type, can have shells that contain 40 to 70 percent calcium. It's odd, but in a way, crabs and mammals share something in common. They all store most of their calcium in bones. After gathering all the essential parts, the crab is set. Underneath its current shell, a fresh, soft, and flexible layer starts to form. The problem is you can't break the old tough exoskeleton with such a soft thing. If a crab lives in water, it fills itself up with lots of water. If it's on land, it fills up with lots of air. Yeah, the crab is really puffing up. The goal is to swell its body so big that its old shell cracks. After that, it just has to wiggle out of it. At this point, you might feel like it's all wrapped up. The hardest part's over. Time to relax? Nope. The crab is still pretty vulnerable, even with its hard shell, so it has to wait. While the crab toughens up, it has to stay hidden. During this time, it's not just predators that can harm it, but even tiny things like bacteria and viruses. Basically, literally everything around it could be a threat. This time happens to be the most dangerous for any crustacean. I think that's why crabs create new shells to grow bigger later on. Right after shedding their old shell, they take in lots of water or air, stretching their bodies to expand the new shell. Once it hardens, the crab shrinks back down, leaving space to grow. This way, they don't have to molt as frequently. Actually, crabs can sometimes die not because they're too fragile and vulnerable without their shells, but because they get stuck halfway through shedding it. It's called molt death syndrome, a condition where crabs struggle to break free from their old outer layer. Typically, it's said that a poor diet, inadequate water, or various infections are to blame. Sadly, crabs that get stuck while shedding their shell usually don't survive. In some cases, this might result in severe injury, which surprisingly could be considered a better outcome. Even with a caring person nearby, helping the crab is tough. Remember how fragile and vulnerable the crab is under its old shell? So if someone tries to intervene and free it gently, they'll probably end up hurting the crab. And it's almost certain the crab won't make it. Its body will be damaged. When it comes to limbs, it's a bit of a different story because losing them isn't usually a big deal. For example, crabs often let go of limbs to escape predators. It's their evolutionary trick. When they shed their old exoskeleton, a new limb grows, but sometimes it can make it tricky for the crab to climb out properly. When crabs shed their shells, the new ones start off soft. Yeah, I mentioned this already, but there's more to it. This softness doesn't last long. The shell usually toughens up within a few hours, or in some species it might take weeks. Now, if a soft crab happens to get hurt during this time, like a stroke of bad luck, that injury will stick around on the shell until the crab molts again. Even though the shell hardens, any deformity from the injury can make things uncomfortable for the crab. Think of it like buying new shoes that are really stiff or rub against your feet. It's a nightmare. Young crabs might not mind a wonky shell much since they molt frequently, but for grown-up crabs waiting a long time to molt, it's pretty tough.
A crab with a shell that it hasn't hardened properly might struggle to move around, needing to use extra energy. If the claws are bent out of shape, it's even worse because they'll get in the way when the crab is hunting or defending itself. Overall, as you've realized, there are enough problems with molting. Too many things can go wrong, which begs the question, how many times in their lives do crabs have to take such risks? How often crabs molt is largely determined by their age. Young crabs during their rapid growth phase shed their exoskeleton roughly every few weeks. Yet as crabs mature, the frequency of molting decreases, and older ones might molt every few months. Eventually, very mature crabs usually go through molting just once a year because their growth rate slows down significantly. Basically, the number of times a crab changes its shell over its life hinges on its species. For some crabs, this can reach up to 30 or even 40 times. Imagine growing up meant doing something as dangerous as crossing a busy high way blindfolded and having to do it over and over again, with each time being just as unsafe as the last, regardless of prior experience. By the way, I wanted to mention something important. I've already said that crabs need calcium to grow their new shell. That's why it's not a good idea to touch an empty crab shell or even think about bringing it home as a souvenir. Because even after molting, the crab still needs its old shell. Crabs stay close to it and literally eat what they recently wore as clothing. Yes, it may not be the most appetizing dish, but it's a valuable source of calcium. For a body that's used up most of its reserves, this is no time to be picky. Even if you don't see a crab by its old shell, that doesn't mean there's not one around. It might have gotten scared off or hidden before you got there, just wanting some time alone to grow a new shell and then come back for a snack. Basically, let the crab do its thing. So here's a thought. What if the crab just forgets to molt? I wonder if that's even possible. Scientists haven't nailed that down because, you know, crabs keep their secrets, but it turns out they can hold off on molting deliberately. In order for a crab to molt, it needs special conditions. If the conditions are not right, the process is delayed, sometimes for a long time. In laboratory conditions, some crabs put off shedding their shells for as much as four months. We even found instances where crabs went without molting for eight months, and in extreme cases, even up to two years. However, a crab cannot delay molting forever. The growth of its own body is a process that cannot be stopped by willpower. Sooner or later, the grown crab finds its shell too small to ignore. If you imagine a situation where the crab doesn't molt anymore, the hard shell will start to compress the body, putting pressure on its internal organs and tissues, ultimately killing the creature. Moreover, if a crab doesn't molt regularly, its shell wears out over time, becoming less effective at protecting its body. The longer it goes without molting, the more dangerous this is for the crab. If the crab completely stops molting, its shell will deteriorate, letting in harmful pathogens, eventually, well, dying, obviously. If you molt, you might die. But if you don't molt, you could also face death. Evolution sure didn't make things easy for survival, did it? However, let's put that question aside for now. I'll get back to it a little later. The problem with the crab and its shell lies in the way the animal's body itself is organized. Most organisms stop growing when they mature because, well, why change anything? But crabs are different. They keep growing until some external cause like severe physical damage, well, or death, stops them. This means that throughout their lives, each crab has to keep shedding its shell, taking risks rather than just growing to a specific size and never shedding again. Some crab species can keep growing for their entire lives, and this ability can actually turn them into really big creatures. Here, for example, is Big Daddy, a Japanese spider crab who lived at Sea Life Aquarium in Blackpool, England. When he died in 2016, he was 80 years old, and since Daddy kept growing all this time, he earned a place in the Guinness World Records as having the longest legs among crabs. Measuring from one end of its claw to the other, that crab stretched out to about 10 feet. One of its legs alone reached 5 feet, and yeah, we're still talking about the crab. I gotta mention that Japanese spider crabs are basically the largest arthropods in the world, and while their bodies do stop growing at some point, that doesn't stop their legs. They continue to grow until the crab dies. By the way, there are probably crabs with even longer legs than Big Daddy, because they can live up to 100 years. It's just that so far, people haven't gotten the right specimen to measure it. The extended legs of Japanese spider crabs are an advantage, helping them roam and reach distant algae and plants. With longer legs, they have increased opportunities to secure food, and maybe even make it in the record books, which is also neat. Apart from this species with long legs, it seems like crabs made a misstep in evolution. I mean, they can keep getting bigger and live insanely long, but here's the twist. They take a gamble every time they molt. And check this out. 
Lobsters, their cousins, face a similar issue with their outer shell. They can almost live forever, but there's a catch. Take a look. As a crustacean's shell gets bigger, it needs more resources to make a new one and to go through the molting process. When lobsters grow really big, they struggle to get enough food to make their shells larger. So instead of a regular home, they have to build a huge mansion complete with a courtyard a spot for helicopters, and even wine cellars. Because of this, the lobsters don't die from getting old, they actually pass away from being completely exhausted. They don't even need any help, like a hungry predator. Crabs don't have the same mechanism as lobsters that would let them live forever, otherwise they'd also tire out and die. Does the shedding of a crab's exoskeleton have any evolutionary purpose? It might seem like a misstep, but surprisingly, nature doesn't see it that way. Instead, we can see there are loads of crabs around. Sure, there's a chance of getting stuck and not making it through the molt, but it's pretty slim. Despite some downsides, the crab's body design has a lot of perks that make it worthwhile. That's why this type of structure has evolved independently at least five times among ten-legged crustaceans. Nature tends to stick with what works. Diversity, however, creates a lot of problems in the end. For scientists, not for the crabs. Take the red king crab. Even though it looks like a crab, it's actually part of the false crabs group, not the true crabs. There are hundreds of similar examples. Ultimately, there are so many different crab species, each with its own unique traits, it makes it hard to figure out what's so remarkable about their bodies. Nevertheless, there are educated guesses. For example, the tucked-in tail of a crab compared to the much more prominent tail of a lobster may reduce the amount of vulnerable flesh available to predators. Basically, if there's something else to eat, predators won't bother targeting crabs. Crabs can scurry sideways more easily thanks to their flat, rounded shells compared to lobsters with their cylindrical bodies. Not to mention that crabs have a body shape that lets them do all sorts of things in their environment. They can swim, walk, jump, run, climb trees, dig holes, fight, and imitate other creatures. They're so versatile that if they suddenly started flying, it wouldn't really surprise anyone. I might have exaggerated a bit, but there are crabs out there that continue to puzzle scientists even now. Imagine when they first found this crab species. It sparked countless questions. First of all, crab was fuzzy and almost looked like Yeti. Second, was constantly waving its claws rhythmically and no one understood why. Upon further examination, it turned out that this crab is quite the farmer. Surprisingly, it grows food right on its shell, not somewhere close by. Yeti crabs thrive near scalding hydrothermal vents about 7,500 feet below the surface. In this bacteria-rich environment, the crab doesn't suffer from a lack of food. When it waves its claws, it's not dancing or shooing away scientists. It's simply gathering extra bacteria. These hitchhiking bacteria then become captives on its hairy body. I highly doubt the bacteria are aware of this arrangement. They live on the crab, multiply, and every now and then, the crab has a snack, making room for new tenants. And this shell is something you really wouldn't want to lose when molting. Everyone needs a shell. Yes, I said you shouldn't touch the crab shell because the crab might need it. However, scientists at the University of Bolton had a different goal in mind. They've developed a new bandage designed with elements from crab shells that helps wounds heal faster. Chitosin, famous for its germ-fighting qualities, does wonders by speeding up blood clotting and numbing pain by blocking nerve endings. Scientists are still figuring out precisely how it all happens, but one thing's certain, it gets the job done. Chitosin is also surprisingly easy to produce. Crab shells are treated with a strong alkaline substance, and the chitlin of the exoskeleton breaks down to chitosin. The only thing left to do is to put it to good use. Platypus crab. Today's crabs might appear a bit spooky when seen closely, but they pale in comparison to an ancient crab from the time of the dinosaurs. This crab was so peculiar that scientists nicknamed it the platypus of the crab world. The creature, called Calicamera perplexa, which means perplexing beautiful chimera, is a hodgepodge of body parts. As the researchers found out, the animal had the mouth of a shrimp, the claws of a modern frog crab, the shell of a lobster, and the paddle-like appendages of a sea scorpion. The eyes were so huge that a person with the same eye-to-body ratio would have had eyes the size of soccer balls. Seeing this makes me want to say, thanks, evolution. It seems our current crabs are pretty good looking after all. They're getting bigger. The giant crabs are coming, and they're hungry. Scientists discovered that increased levels of carbon dioxide in the air are causing some unexpected changes in crabs. You know the whole global warming thing? 
and how it throws everything off track? The water becomes more acidic and carbon rich, and that makes crabs bigger, hungrier, faster, and stronger. It all makes sense. Faster growth means more molting. When crabs eat a lot or grow quickly, they molt way more often. This leads to increased competition among them, and voila, now the crabs are more aggressive. The bad news is that their rapid growth means larger crabs end up with less meat, which isn't good news for those who enjoy seafood. But maybe we should just wait a bit longer. See you later.